Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. I am so incredibly excited today to have Anita Norman Lee with here with me and she's she's got a pretty cool job and I am <laughs> I, th I think it's a pretty cool job. Um, she's the director of podcast operations here with WREL Studios and Capital Broadcasting Company. And I am incredibly excited to have her here with me today. And I'm going to turn it over to her and let her introduce herself. Um, no, no pressure there. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think I do have a cool job. I like what I, I do. It. I love it. Um, we have a network of about 20 some podcasts. And I say 20 okay. some because the number varies. Some are out of production or on hiatus at any yep. one time. Yep. Um, but 20 some podcasts that are local for the most part, some are local news, local sports. We have a podcast about North Carolina beer called 919 beer. We have a couple of true crime shows. We're yeah. dabbling in a little bit of everything. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You've been in the world of broadcasting, producing, podcasting now for almost 26 years, I want to say. Yeah. Longer than that. Yeah. How, how did you come to be doing what you are doing today? How did you come into broadcasting? Well, I think that's an interesting question because when I started, when I was in college and when I started my career, there weren't podcasts. Yeah. So yeah. this job didn't exist. And I think that's kind of cool and kind of yeah. exciting. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to do the same job for all these years, for sure. <laughs> um, but I think I got started in this just because I love television. Like literally when I was a kid, I loved to watch television. I don't know lots of kids watch television, but it was to a different level for yeah. me. really. Yeah. And I, I remember like having knowledge, like being aware yeah. that I was watching ABC on Tuesday night and here was the schedule for Tuesday night. And this show's on NBC and this show's on CBS. Wow. And I didn't understand that all my friends didn't know that. Like, are you unaware of the program schedule, the TV right. channel you're watching? Right. Do you not know the difference in a network show and a local show? Yeah. And, you know, that is not something everybody knows. I get that now. Yeah. Um, so I, when I went to college, I was like undecided. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to do yeah. or I didn't know really what was out there to do. Yep. And um, after a couple of years of just, taking classes and a little bit of everything, I thought, oh, hey, what's this mass comm degree? That sounds kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. But then I ended up taking classes. I mean, I guess as most people who take mass comm classes, it's a lot of general things. Yes. And it's kind of, it kind of leans you toward journalism and, and that kind of broadcasting. But I was very clear, like, this is not what I want to do. I do not want to be a journalist. I don't want to ask questions. Um, I'm just... I like what I like. Like, I like to go in tangents on things, but I don't want to just ask broad questions every day. Yeah. Um, but I really liked editing and that's how I got into TV production. Okay. So um, towards the end of college and then right after college, I worked at local TV stations here in Raleigh okay. and landed at WREL pretty quickly after college. And I've been a capital broadcasting company ever since in one role or another. And you truly have like, you've been production manager. Now you're in the director of podcast operations. Where have you seen the growth or change over the last 20 something years in this world, in this world of TV production and now podcast? Oh my God. I mean, I, I can't really think of anything that hasn't changed yeah. since I started doing this. Um, I mean, certainly technology, yeah, changes in technology are sure. are amazing. I always think about um, when I first started in TV, we used to have these radio spots that we would send out during ratings periods. And this makes me sound really old. I almost, maybe I shouldn't have started this story, but it's kind of funny now <laughs> to tell it. Um, when we had to change a radio spot, like a last minute change for whatever reason in right. programming, we had, you know, we had put the spot on a reel. Yep. Like tape. Yep. And to get it to the Fayetteville radio station, someone would go and take the reel yeah. and put it on the bus, like the Greyhound bus. And then someone from the radio station in Fayetteville who was running it, probably yeah. the salesperson would go and pick it up at the bus station. And now, you know, you just make a new MP3 and here, replace the spot, please. 
and it would get done and it would be fine. But like everything, things are so much easier because of technology. Yep. And I think that um, it doesn't make being creative any easier, yeah. but it just gives you a lot more tools. It, it makes things faster, hopefully. Okay. Well, certainly today putting stuff on a Greyhound bus. Yeah. Yeah. So- I like when it makes things easier. <laughs> I like easy. Just send it really quickly. It saves a lot of time, gas mileage, money. Yeah. Oh my God. And the wait time. <laughs> like it, and now it could be on the air and wherever running, you know, in Omaha or wherever you want it to run. But just think about that. I know. Yeah. With the 20 something podcast that you are, you know, helping to produce, directing all of these where where do the ideas come for these podcasts how does how does that process begin yeah that's a good question well a lot of the podcasts come from our sports radio stations okay and you know the folks who are on air on sports radio are masters at talking about what they're talking about like that's their job so if you if they think up a podcast they can pretty much make it yeah immediately because that's what they do they they know a lot about what they know and they can talk about it and they're really good at it yep um so there are a lot of sports podcasts that come from there's some repurposed content podcasts that we have where we take best of clips from radio and publish them as podcasts okay but um they also produce a lot of original content there's a canes podcast called canes corner and adam gold you know, yep. publishes an episode after every game, recapping the game and yep. what worked and what didn't. Um, and then they'll do in-depth, like multi, multi-episode reporting on one topic. Okay. Um, and they come up with those ideas for the most part. Okay. And they are the person you hear is the driving force behind okay. that content. Okay. Um, but all the time, someone will come up and go, hey, we should do a podcast about blank. And there are, first of all, there's so many podcasts, but there are also so many ideas for podcasts. Like, hey, that would make a great podcast. Okay, well, let's stop and think about that for a second. Like, who's going to, who's going to make that happen? Who's going to make sure the story's good? Like, it takes a lot of time to make a podcast. And it takes a lot of, you know, this, it takes dedication to keep it going, Yep. to build an audience. So we have to kind of step back and think, what's the marketing plan? Yep. Do we have time to execute all this well, not just make the podcast? You got to look at the bigger picture of everything. (laughs) Like, is it a podcast that you want to keep going for a long period of time? Or is this like a short series, which you see a lot of people doing now as kind of just like a one-off opportunity to kind of get their, almost their fill of things uh, in the podcast world and check it off. Yeah. And I love a short series podcast as a listener like I want to binge that over two days and be done and move on yeah but then you kind of look around like what's next what do I do next yeah Yeah. so imagine you know the people who took months to create that show yeah what are you left with when someone listens and then they're gone absolutely it's it's a very you kind of wish for the longer the longer set series when Mm -hmm. you do get hooked on things like that well, where did you, I'm going to ask you a question now. Oh. <laughs> um, where did you get the idea for this podcast? I, this actually started as a YouTube series. Um, and I graduated from NC State and I was always the kid grew up in a household. You go to college, you get your piece of paper. I graduated and never and hated learning from a textbook. And so I, uh, I was still hungry after I graduated to keep learning and, um, started with friends who were, you know, out doing cool stuff and, uh, progressively build up my confidence to send emails and pitches out to, um, to people like yourself and others in the community and then broader, um, to just keep learning from people. And, uh, it's, it's been really, really cool to hear everybody's story everybody has a completely different story and that's that's the beautiful part about it but uh yeah this started as a youtube series hmm 
And do you feel like you're an introvert or an extrovert? Oh, I'm an introvert. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, me too. Well, that's interesting. But see, I think it would be easier to like meet someone and maybe not talk to them very much. Yeah. And then send them an email and go, hey, would you have this conversation with me? Uh, I think even in introverts can function like this. Yeah. It's, it is crazy. And everybody, everybody does think I'm extrovert and I'm like, I would be perfectly fine sitting in my house by myself with my dogs. Yes. Nobody, just everybody leave me alone. Yeah. Oh yeah. I could, I could do everything I'm doing now with a cat on my lap at home. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I work from home as well. Like I have a remote job and like, sometimes I feel the effects, like I would love to be in an office with my team because things would be just easier. Yeah. Um, but other times I'm like, no, I'm going to sit right here in my very comfortable chair <laughs> and yeah. answer these emails and Slack messages. Interesting. I thought you, I thought for sure you would say, oh, I'm an extrovert. I love talking to people. No, hmm. I like, I've, I've always been an introvert. I get like, these are my really energetic moments where I'm like, I get to talk to people and then I'm like dead for the next few days. Oh yeah. 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 You'll power down right after this. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely will. I absolutely will. For your nine to five or whatever your daily workday looks like, what what does that schedule look like for Anita? Um, well, I spend a lot of time during the day since we do have 20 podcasts. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time looking at numbers and seeing how things are doing. Like what is suddenly bubbling up or what got published, but didn't get the social post around it that it needed that yep. um, we can give it an extra push. What is something that we did a podcast episode on that's pretty evergreen, but now there's a new story related to this. How can we tie those two together? So there's a, a numbers component to it Correct. also. Yeah. And then there's a good bit of podcast listening, depending on what's in production at any one time, I'll listen to a rough cut of something or listen to a mix just to make sure everything sounds okay. Or this is clear. Or that's clear. Yep. Um, there's a lot of that. And there's also a component of working with the sales team here to, you know, inform them about what podcasts we have, what's available yeah. and, and how to, how to find sponsors for that or how to you know, just helping them out with sales questions. It's always interesting to me. Um, you know, sometimes I'll go long droughts where I have a really hard time getting, you know, just it's slower to get people on the podcast and things like that. How far out are you guys recording podcasts typically? Like if you're recording a podcast episode today, how soon is it going out? Um, well, it depends on the show. Okay. Um, but pretty quick, unless it's, um, well, the fast shows like our daily news podcast, yes. WRL daily download, it will get recorded today and then published at like 4 a.m. tomorrow. So okay. it gets recorded today and then mixed today and anything else that has to happen to it published tomorrow. Right. And once in a while, if, um, if it's a story that's not necessarily breaking news because that's really hard to stop and do a podcast about and the information could be outdated quickly. <laughs> but if it's a very timely story, yeah. like a, a legislative vote that has an right. impact on everybody, they might do an episode today and release it tonight. Okay, okay. Um, now our true crime stuff is a whole different story, of course. Yeah. That's a whole different, that's like producing a six part or eight part documentary series you yes. know they're working on that months ahead of time they might record an interview today that doesn't get used for six months I mean we have a plan and WRL daily download is a Monday through Friday show yep one episode a day but then again we might get ahead based on yep. you know we're, we're banking true. some evergreens or we're looking ahead for this content that we can put out over this holiday or whatever yeah. so yeah we're trying to work ahead when we can with your sitting and looking at metrics and things like that, have you found patterns and trends? I'm like, okay, this day is great for putting episodes out. I know with the WRL daily download, it's, that's a little hard to look at, but are there like trends that you're seeing of what makes like the little things that make a podcast successful? I don't think 
I don't think the day matters. Okay. Uh, as as far as I see, and we're basically only releasing Monday through Friday. Everything is pretty much Monday through yep. Friday, unless there's a Hurricanes game on the weekend, and then there'll be an episode on the weekend. Yep. Um, I, I don't see that that changes it, but since most of our podcasts are local news and local sports, yeah. it's really determined, what helps determine it is what's the story in local news or local yep. sports that can go with it. That, yep. That if the content is aligned, okay, then it definitely peaks. It's it's so interesting to me. And like I hear the debate all the time. Uh, people will say, "Oh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the three best days." And I'm like, "Well, what makes those days the best days? Because what is what makes them different than anything else?" And it's just so funny to hear people have that argument. Well, I I don't know for sure, but I've heard that too, and I try to stick to that when I'm scheduling things ahead of time. Yeah. I think they're because they're the best work days for me. <laughs> you know, Monday, like it's too soon. It's too soon. Don't, I don't want to walk. If anything goes wrong, I don't want to walk into a, <laughs> a storm on Monday morning. Yes. And again, on Friday, you know, yes. like let's not, let's not tempt fate by Friday afternoon releasing yeah. a show. We'll do it yeah. midweek and then we can work it out if anything goes wrong. <laughs> you just build the collection up and then we'll see yeah. what happens. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see what we need to get through the rest of the week kind of situation. We've talked a little bit about the, you know, the history in the last 26 years you've been working in broadcasting. I want to just get a little forecasting mind from you with what you're in today with like podcasting. Everybody has a podcast today, but next five, 10 years, what is, what does that even look like from your perspective? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I wish I knew. Yeah. I think um I think authenticity is a big thing that will take us into the future. And I think it's it'll probably be just a reaction to so much AI yep. that we'll seek out. I think we'll see, especially in advertising and from brands. Um I wouldn't be surprised if there's content on web that we start to see this was written by a human. Like we'll see that. Yeah. Yeah. And as opposed to, you know, AI generated. Yep. yep. Um, and I would imagine that'll that'll it'll always be like an organic label on food. Like we'll see that that authentic human touch emphasize when it's there. And I think that probably can lend itself to podcasts really well. Yeah. People just being real about whatever their topic is. It almost makes me wonder, you know, podcasts have been a massive thing ever since the pandemic started. It was YouTube. It's still around today. Um, but you hear everybody has a podcast now instead of everybody has a YouTube channel. I, it just makes me think like, what could possibly be the next sort of multimedia that comes in that is going to grab people's attention so heavily to replace podcasts or YouTube even more. Um, it's always makes me very interested to see what the next couple of years is going to look like. Um, yeah. Spaces. I mean, I think one thing that keeps coming up is what is a podcast? Yeah. You know, when people publish video on YouTube and say, here's my podcast. Well, is that, is that what we're calling a podcast? Yeah is this a podcast? Yeah. Um, and is it any kind of audio content? Yeah. I mean, I think there's something you can do with a podcast, even not like this, not with video like this. I, if you and I had a mic between us right. and we're in a room, I feel like the sound you're going to get is going to be different. Um, the way people are going to talk is going to be different when they're not seeing their own stupid face on the screen all the time, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't want to lose that. Yeah. But that's what I like about podcasts. I love to listen to a podcast and you can hear that people are opening up and being super real and telling painful stories or, you know, yeah. telling deep, dark secrets yeah. that they wouldn't be telling if there was a camera in front of them. No, I mean, there, there are some things that I think it's, it's not the same. I, I completely agree with you. I think it's, um, one of the beautiful parts about podcasting is just the storytelling. Like you said, people become just a little bit more open and, uh, it, the questions that just come out of conversations and it's just nice to 
like the flow that goes into um, having those conversations is really, it's like, it's almost cathartic and very energizing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a lot of emotions that happen with it, I think. Yeah. And plus, if you can be together recording a podcast and you put those headphones on and you hear yourself and you hear how you sound, you hear yeah. how the other, it just makes every question a little more serious, you know? Yeah. It, it, I don't know. Yeah. I guess it makes it feel important. Like yeah. you're really listening to me. Three tips that you would give or three pieces of advice you would give for people who are wanting to come into this world of broadcasting, podcasting, producing, whatever it may be. Wow, that's a that's a really good question. I did not anticipate that. I think number one, never stop, never stop learning. Always be willing to grow your skills because you know, in a world or a field where technology is a big driver, like you always have something new to learn. Yes. Can I get to the point that you go, nope, I'm not accepting any new information. I will not learn this new system, period. I mean, the, I've seen people do that at work. Oh, well, yeah. You know, I think we've all probably encountered somebody like that at work. And it's it's like, well, I can't go to that person for this because they right. don't know how to use the. Right. Um, so always be prepared to learn more. Love it. Um. I think also, though, the flip side of that is figure out what you don't like. Figure out what you don't want to be doing. Because I think people say, well, where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? What's your passion? Like, you can figure that out, you know, for trial and error. But I think it's very important to know, okay, I dabbled in that, and that's what I don't want. You know, I, I tried video editing, and I didn't like it. Yeah. And not just like a knee jerk reaction, but give it a good try and then, you know, determine what's not for you. And um, I think for me personally, if I'm not having fun every day at work, if I'm not laughing with the people that I work with, I can't be here. Yeah. It's not going to work for me personally. So keep a sense of humor and, you know, delight in what you delight in at yep. work or at home like just be who you are okay. and you know you'll find your place and your people that you can be yourself with at work i love that i love that if you were to start a podcast today that you are passionate about what what is it about and what would you call mm. it? oh it would be oh well i have a really good idea but i don't i almost don't want to tell you cuz i don't want somebody to steal this idea <laughs> it, I don't know it would probably be some very niche deep thing okay. that I would it would probably be like something like royal jewels and when they've been worn like this brooch that was oh. given to Queen Victoria and yeah. has been worn three times in the you know 100 years yeah. since or whatever yeah. or, you know like just random but deep okay okay I but I will, okay, I'll tell you the other idea from our podcast. My <laughs> husband and I had this idea and it's called, <laughs> the title is, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, and boy, I'm going to have to trademark this. Maybe, maybe people will dump out. They got bored of me before this. They're not going to hear this, but it's where you really ask people things that obviously other people notice. Yeah. And, but you find people who are willing to talk about them. Like, I couldn't help but notice you have an eye patch. Yeah. What's wrong there? Yeah. Were you born without an eye? Yeah. Are you doing it to protect yourself or us from yeah. seeing what's left there? You know, but I think you have to, <laughs> it's, it's, you know what? You could transform the conversation series into this. Daniel. Yes. I it. like it. But you have to find people who also have a sense of humor, who are willing to go, well, thank you for asking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like that. My sister and I, um, 
the i don't know why it's been like the last few months it's like acting on your unconscious thoughts it is those things of asking people yeah why <laughs> just <laughs> yeah why that like, like i'd like to talk to someone that has um tattoos like all the way up yeah. to here or face tattoos yeah. and say look have you ever regretted this like what did your mom say yeah she, what did your grandma say yeah did when you went to the tattoo parlor was the person who did this to you like totally tattooed or did anyone there go <clears throat> all right think about this one more time let's just let's just give it a minute be sure you want to come back tomorrow yeah on this but come back tomorrow and we'll do it yeah just think on it one more night just are you 100 percent positive are on you 100 percent positive this is what you want <laughs> this will not come off it it will come off, but it'll be very pricey and very mm -hmm. painful. Yes. Yeah. No, I love that idea. I think that's fantastic. I do think you should trademark that though very quickly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's almost like what kids would do. You know, like yeah, kids wow. do not have a filter about asking questions. Yeah. Like, yeah. look, mom, that dog has three legs. Sure. Like we all just noticed that. Yeah. But everybody wouldn't say it. Yeah. But finding the right people, although I think that's a podcast, if it got popular, it would be self-perpetuating because you would start to get a following and people would go call in and go, hey, guess what's wrong? Guess what's not wrong, but guess what I've got? Yes. Like call in show. Mm. See, well, see I'm yeah. helping. I'll help any way that you want. <laughs> I'll just keep throwing stuff at you. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could just start with your friends. You just branch out and, you yeah. know. Everybody's got something unusual about them. That's very true. Everybody's yeah. got their something. Yeah. Everybody's got something. <laughs> My last question for you is just what inspires you? Wow. Uh, I think, okay. <laughs> um, I get really inspired when I have a plan mm. and something to look forward to like a trip or, um, you know, just something like something that I can research and get into yeah. and learn a whole lot about, and then kind of distill it all into yeah. a plan. I'm really good at book reports and things like that. So, um, assignments like that at work, it's perfect for me. Like some people wouldn't like that. I know, but I do. You like digging in. I like digging in. Yeah. Like I'll read a book about a thing and go, well, that was interesting. Let me find a podcast about that. Well, that was interesting. Let me go find another book about that. And it's just a the rabbit hole. It's like, digging a rabbit hole. But again, like back to college, I didn't like those journalism classes. I just want to know what I want to know about. You know, I did, don't, don't give me an assignment. I want to go fig figure out my, yeah. my research topic on my own. I like that. I like that. I love the, I, I get really nerdy when I have a guest on. Cause I'm like, I'm going to go and do whatever research I can to figure out all these different things about my guests. So I can just completely geek out and I'll, I'll literally, I'll sit down and do it for hours, um, until I've hit a, the rabbit hole that cannot go any farther. And I've, I've seen things several times. Um, but it's, I, I get really nerdy with research. Um, I love yeah. it. Do you ever like spring a question on somebody and, and they say, oh my God, how do you know that? How did, how did you even find that? I've, I've had it a few times, but I think also, um, I, I ask everybody at the end, the, what inspires you question. And I, I, I guess I'm asking people really hard and heavy questions before that. So when it comes to that, people are like, oh, you've stumped me. And I'm like, this is the easiest question that I asked you. <laughs> well, yeah, but you want to have a smart answer. You don't yeah. want to seem like, well, I just love to pet, pet my cat and you know, <laughs> brush her teeth with the little finger toothbrush thing. I mean, I don't want to say that. <laughs> it is, but it's, I've, uh, it's just really interesting. I'll do the if they've been on a podcast before, I'll go listen to podcasts that, the, that, that they've been on. So I'm not maybe asking the same question, but how can I go down that avenue and take a different turn? Um, so it is, it's very, 
I just love doing research. Yeah. Makes <laughs> my introvert self loves doing research. Oh yeah, you're right. It does feed into that for sure. Like even if you can't, you learn something new and you look around and no one's there, you're like, well, lucky me. Now I know this, <laughs> I know this thing now that I didn't know before. <laughs> It'll come up. Like all this research, you'll have a there'll be a moment that you go, oh, you know what? I happen to know. Yeah. meaning of this polish word that means blah 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 or whatever you know <laughs> it's always good it's just the you learn something new every day and then the yeah sometimes random facts come in use yeah you never know when they're coming to use you, but they you never know and, yeah. and and not in trivial ways not like you know no. trivia at a bar but it's yeah when you need it the most it will come out but you have to find the people who will appreciate these yes. random nuggets <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, what is she talking about? <laughs> Where'd she get that from? <laughs> that was that was random. Totally. <laughs> well, Anita, I can't thank you enough for coming on and talking with me today. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate you asking me to do this. Yes, absolutely. And uh, if you guys do not follow Anita on LinkedIn, please go give her a follow. Please go give her a follow on her socials. And uh, I will see you guys back here next time. All right. Thanks.